Welcome back Defenders, Jake here. We're going to start today's video with the craziest story. RT News' editor-in-chief, Margarita Simonyon, suggested that it might be a good idea to detonate a nuclear weapon over Siberia. She's looking pretty orange today, but let's watch this clip together. Термоядерный взрыв, например, ядерный взрыв, то ничего не будет на Земле. Ничего такого страшного, ни ядерной зимы, которую все боятся, ни чудовищной радиации, которая умрет всех, убьет всех вокруг, пока не убьют, те умрут в течение 10 лет от онкологии. Этого ничего не будет. А что будет? Так это будет выведена из строя вся радиоэлектроника, вся цифра, все спутники. Вот эта камера, на которую меня сейчас снимают. Вот этот телефон, который рядом со мной лежит. Все, мы вернемся с вами в год эдак какой-нибудь 93-й. Проводные телефоны. Двушечка или уже не двушечка была, я не помню, в телефоне-автомате. Я вам скажу, чудесно же жили. Вот право, я даже обрадуюсь. Как минимум, мне не придется объяснять своим детям, почему у всех есть гаджеты, а у них нету. Я запрещаю своим детям иметь гаджеты. Это отдельная тема. Сейчас не об этом. Ну, как минимум, вот это будет гораздо спречь. Каждый раз, когда дети возвращаются из школы, вот у всех есть телефон, а iPad у нас нету, почему нету? Я сказала, что ни у кого нету. То есть эта опция, она остается. И... She ends this clip by saying, this option remains, and this is still the most humane one. So this is what happens in authoritarian regimes when all media is controlled by the state. There are producers, there are editors, there was a cameraman, and nobody corrected her because she is the conduit to the Kremlin. She is the one who controls the narrative and approves and disapproves what is acceptable to say on Russian-controlled state TV. So if she says something stupid, there's nobody to catch it. R.T. Simonyan faces backlash over call to detonate nuke over Siberia. The Kremlin had to put out a statement. This was from Peskov. We haven't abandoned the norm against nuclear testing. Simonyan does not work in official institutions, so her words do not reflect the official position of the Russian Federation. So yes, this is the Kremlin's trick. Anything said on Russian-controlled state TV is not the official position of the government, but nothing is said on Russian-controlled state TV without the approval of the Kremlin, but it looks like Simonyan made a mistake. Here is a member of Russia's state Duma condemning her statements. You should at least apologize to all the residents of Siberia and especially to those who suffer from the consequences of the tests at the old Soviet Union's test site. Katerov defended her. Katerov uh, posted on Telegram, she is a true patriot who defends national interests on any platform. And Simonyon is embarrassed. She took to Telegram to claim not that she made a mistake, not that she apologizes, but if anyone repeats what she said, that she said it, she's going to sue them for defamation. She's going to take them to court. A day later, sure enough, a member of Russia's parliament, Nikolai Korolev, was talking about what she said on television, and she's now demanding an investigation of this member of parliament. We'll see if they can resolve the dispute, or if Margarita is powerful enough to have this member of Russia's parliament sent to a prison camp for eight years for talking about what she talked about. The other top story, I, I know a lot of my international viewers are going to be very concerned and confused. Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy was removed from his position. He's second in line to be president. It goes... President, Vice President, Speaker of the House. And eight members of McCarthy's own party voted to remove him from office. This has never happened in the almost 250 years of 
the United States' history, so this is pretty crazy and pretty unprecedented. And we do have an interim Speaker of the House. This is Republican Representative Patrick McHenry, but he can't do anything. All he can do is uh, open and close sessions of the House and then oversee the election of a new Speaker of the House. So here's uh, Patrick McHenry, and let's see if you can no notice anything odd about this clip. Chair declares the House a recess subject to the call of the chair. Let's watch that gavel slam one more time. Chair declares the House a recess subject to the call of the chair. He looked pretty mad. This is an internal dispute and an internal fight happening amongst House Republicans. Patrick McHenry is a friend and a supporter of Speaker McCarthy. So the House is in recess. They sent everyone home. People were saying that if people stayed in Washington, D.C., House Republicans would be getting into fist fights with other House Republicans over this speaker battle. So everyone's been sent home. Everyone's going to cool off. The House is going to come back uh, into session probably next Monday. And the first thing they have to do is vote on a new speaker. It's going to get interesting next week. I honestly don't know what's going to happen. And people want to know why. Why was Speaker McCarthy removed? And it's partly because he went to the Democrats for help to get this 45-day continuing resolution to keep the government open. There are members of the House Republican Caucus who just want to see the government shut down. They think that would give them maximum leverage and pressure to get concessions, to change budget items. The other reason is support for Ukraine. There are members of the House Republican Caucus who hate Ukraine, and they will do anything to prevent uh, another year's worth of military aid and funding. So here was, here was President Biden on October 1st stating that the White House and House Democrats had made a deal with Speaker McCarthy on Ukraine funding. Mr. President, are you going to be able to trust Speaker McCarthy when the next deal comes around? We just made one about Ukraine, so we'll find out. So the rumor is, is that in order to get the Democrats to help McCarthy pass this 45-day continuing resolution, McCarthy made a promise that maybe there would be an up or down vote on Ukraine funding, or maybe in November it would be part of appropriations bills. So here's Florida Congressman Matt Gates saying the exact same thing. So we represent the pool on the networks. Your message on this motion to vacate the vote coming up to you? I, I, all I would add is that uh, clearly somebody's been lied to because we heard the president come out and say there was a deal with the speaker on Ukraine, and the speaker just stood up in front of all of us and said that there's no deal on Ukraine. Uh, the House Democrats say there's a deal on Ukraine, so uh, we're going to have to sort that out. We're going to have to sort out who's lying, because somebody's lying about whether or not, as in this CR negotiation, there was a secret side deal on Ukraine funding. Uh, so this is partly why Matt Gates forced the vote on Speaker McCarthy and why McCarthy lost his job. And if you don't know much about Matt Gates. He's a very controversial person in American politics. Here is Oklahoma Senator uh, Mark Wayne Mullen, he's a Republican, giving his thoughts on Matt Gates. You gotta think about this guy. Um, this is a guy that didn't have, that the media didn't give a time of day to after he was accused of sleeping with an underage girl. And there's a reason why no one and the conference came and defended him because we had all seen the videos he was showing on the House floor that all of us had walked away of the girls that he had slept with. He'd brag about how he would uh, crush ED medicine and, and, and chase it with, um, with an energy drink so he could go all night. This is obviously... So that is Republican Oklahoma Senator Mullen claiming that Matt Gates showed members of their conference videos of women he had slept with and bragged that he liked to crush erectile dysfunction medicine into energy drinks so he could go all night. 
So this is Russia's champion. This is Russia's best hope to block any additional military funding for Ukraine for the next year. Shutting down the government, I'm sure Russia would also prefer. The allegation Matt Gates denied, sex with a 17-year-old, ecstasy, sugar daddy websites, trips with young women to the Bahamas, and misusing campaign funds. So Matt Gates has never been officially charged with anything from the Department of Justice. Everybody involved in these websites and trips and interactions with underage women don't really want to cooperate with any kind of trial or, or I, I don't know, as an American, I'm speechless that this is the guy holding up Ukraine funding. This is the guy threatening to shut down the U.S. government. This is the guy that, in the first time in our nation's history, had a Speaker of the House removed from his position. So overall, by November, I'm actually still confident that military aid funding for Ukraine will be approved for the next year. And the reason is simple. The support for Ukraine is overwhelming and bipartisan. So on September 28th, when they were debating the budget, here was one of the amendments voted on the House. Ukraine Security Assistance and Oversight Supplemental. This bill is, doesn't exist anymore, but this is how the House voted. 210 House Democrats were in favor, 101 House Republicans giving a supermajority of 311 members of the House supporting military aid to Ukraine for another year. Analysis how U.S. aid to Ukraine is a bonanza for the U.S. economy? When the United States gives military equipment to Ukraine, some of this military equipment is 20, 30 years old. It was going to be decommissioned and disposed of anyways. We're then using the money we're allocating to just make ourselves new weapons and equipment. This is money going to U.S. defense contractors. Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, Huntington Ingalls. These are American jobs. This is American tax revenue being generated here in the United States. So I hope that workers at these plants uh, are paying attention. A lot of these factories and, and companies are based in districts uh, with House Republicans representing them. This is a no-brainer. So I'm hoping the U.S. defense industry can call their representatives and say, hey, why are you not supporting jobs for Americans? Why are you not supporting stimulating the American economy? That's what's happening when we transfer old armored vehicles to Ukraine and then build new ones for ourselves. So according to uh, Ukraine's ambassador to the United States, Ukraine is in dialogue with uh, the potential new speaker candidates, Jim Jordan, Steve Scalise, there's a couple others. Ukraine's going to reach out to all of them to, once again, make the case why it's in the U.S.'s best national security interest to continue helping and supporting Ukraine. Here's the statement from President Biden. Today I convened a call with allies and partners to coordinate our ongoing support for the people of Ukraine. We discussed getting Ukraine the resources it needs and our work to address the global energy, economic, and food challenges caused by Russia's war of choice. So the rumor is, is that President Biden is preparing a primetime address to the nation He's going to speak from either the Oval Office or the White House and probably give a 30-minute speech laying out the case why it's in the U.S.'s best interest to continue militarily supporting Ukraine for another year. This will be broadcast in all the major networks. Presidents in the past have done the exact same thing when talking about Kuwait or Kosovo or Panama. <laughs> So we'll see what Biden has to say once he gives his speech. And even if the United States stops supporting Ukraine, that doesn't mean Ukraine won't still win this war. 
Your support just defines how, how long this war will go, what price and what cost Ukraine ultimately will have to pay. This is a sad story. This happened this morning. Russian strike hits village Wake. At least 51 civilians killed. The Russian attack on the Kharkiv region village happened in the middle of a funeral, killing some 20% of the village's entire population, including a six-year-old girl. So the village of Rosa, it's between Kharkiv and Izium. This is probably 30 kilometers from the front lines. And Russia knew that there was going to be a gathering in this supermarket and coffee shop. People were having a funeral, a wake. And Russia hit it with a missile, killing 20% of the people of this town. This is horrific. This is a genocide. This is what Russia does. I'll link this video down below if you want to see more footage of, of the massacre. A village of 300 people, and they just lost 50 because of the Russians. Ukraine hits Kremlin top-end S-400 anti-air system, first time in mainland Russia. So what Ukraine is doing is they're developing their own domestic drone fleet, and they're going after valid military targets in, in Russia. While Russia wastes their resources blowing up supermarkets and cafes, Ukraine's actually trying to militarily win this war. And for the first time in mainland Russia, they successfully struck and destroyed or mostly damaged a Russian S-400 air defense system. These things are expensive, so every time Ukraine can get one of these with a relatively inexpensive drone, that's a huge victory. Jet ski born Ukrainian special ops raid shown in new video. The newly released video claims to show teams of Ukrainian frogmen riding jet skis landing on the shores of Crimea. So here's the video put out by Ukraine's intelligence. I'll link it down below. There are some mixed reviews how this went. Just the fact that they can do an amphibious landing on the beaches of Crimea. This is a headache for the Russians. They have to think about their defenses and their readiness for these kinds of assaults. But Ukraine did take losses. Uh, a Ukrainian Special Forces member fell off a jet ski and was picked up, apprehended by the Russians. Russian information is claiming that this raid was a fiasco, but Ukraine did land on the beach. They did assault some Russian positions. They did raise the flag and... Most of the defenders uh, successfully evacuated. Here's an interesting clip from Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu from yesterday, stating that another round of mass mobilization isn't going to occur this year. This is something we were all speculating would happen after the regional elections in Russia two weeks ago, but it might not be happening now. Here's what Shoigu has to say. The general staff has no plans for further mobilization. The armed forces have the necessary numbers of servicemen to conduct the special military operation. In many ways, this is helped by a solid patriotic position of our citizens who actively fill the ranks of the motherland defenders. Since the start of the year, more than 335,000 people joined contract service or volunteer units. Over 50,000 citizens signed contracts just in September. An essential contribution to the common cause is made by all subjects of the country. Large enterprises, state corporations, and Russian Cossacks. A number of regions continue forming named units. So Russia's central government has been putting a lot of pressure on private companies and regional governments to strongly recommend to their local citizens to sign contracts with the Russian military. A lot of these men are in a way being pressured or forced by their employers. So Russia's managing to do it. They're still mobilizing. They're still doing small amounts every single day 
calling people back to service. They're still conscripting like crazy. They're putting on the pressure to get people to sign contracts. And Russia's MOD is saying this is enough for now. The thought now is, is Putin really wants to hold off until next March. He wants to get through his election before doing some serious uh, martial law and mobilizations. Kremlin is readying Putin's 2024 campaign reveal at an economic expo. Putin may use his upcoming visit to the Russian expo, which will see regions and cities showcase their economic successes amid international sanctions, to announce his candidacy. Uh, Putin wants a fifth presidential term in office. So what the heck is Putin running on? Toxic landfill in southern Russia catches fire. Russia's literally a dumpster fire. Their trash pits are burning now. He's still going to win with over 90% of the votes because elections in Russia are rigged. <laughs> there are There is no free media. There are no independent candidates challenging Putin. And here's a picture that you'll never see. A picture of a real leader. Here's President Zelensky meeting with ordinary Ukrainian soldiers. And these Ukrainian soldiers still have their weapons with their ammo mere feet away from President Zelensky, who's not even wearing a bulletproof vest. Putin would never do this. This is the difference uh, between Ukraine and Russia, and why Ukraine's cause is justified, why the free and democratic world needs to continue supporting Ukraine. And Russia is quickly becoming North Korea 2.0. The Russians are saying that on March 1st, they're finally going to deal with VPNs. So if you want free information on your cell phone or computer in Russia, you have to have a VPN. Almost everyone has one. So Russia knows this is a problem because information from the outside world is getting in. So on March 1st, uh, they're putting in motion a plan to fix this. All VPNs will be banned. They'll be blocked from app stores, and they'll find some way to stop people from illegally installing them on their devices. Let's get to the good news for Ukraine. Warsaw, Kyiv make breakthrough on transit of Ukrainian grain. The three-nation agreement between Poland, Ukraine, and Lithuania means that Ukrainian grain exports destined for markets in Africa and the Middle East will be taken directly through Poland instead of first being checked at the Polish border. So Ukraine and Poland are true, true allies, true friends. All of these headlines about this grain dispute, I think, will be resolved in time, incrementally, through negotiations and talks. This is a good thing. The United States will hand over to Ukraine thousands of Iranian weapons and ammunition seized on the way to Yemen, Iran was trying to smuggle weapons to rebels in Yemen, and the U.S. Navy intercepted this ship. They've been holding it for months now, and they're finally going to free this uh, ammunition up and just send it directly to Ukraine. Thank you, Iran. H&M is reopening their stores in Ukraine. Six stores will reopen by the end of November. This is once again just about creating jobs and creating tax revenue for the local economy. Every store helps. Final couple clips I want to share with you. The first one is a crazy one. And these are Ukrainian defenders uh, using unconventional methods to take apart this cluster rocket. So this looks like they're using a mortar round to hit an artillery round to take apart a cluster munitions rocket. They probably want the explosives inside so that they can drone drop with them, but yeah, I know none of the fuses are installed, and in theory you can do this, but I wouldn't recommend it, and yeah, that's pretty crazy. Let's watch them whack it a few more times. Jesus. Final clip I have for you is a funny one. This was actually filmed in occupied Luhansk. 
and a local resident noticed uh, a new memorial that went up, and it's kind of questionable. So we've got a new memorial to the Great Patriotic War. Russia doesn't recognize the beginning of World War II as 1939. They want to forget uh, those two years that they were cooperating with the Nazis. They claim the war started in 1941. But there's another monument there now. So they have the end dates of uh, Luhansk's fight for independence as 2023. So Russia just assumed this war would be over by this year. And it doesn't actually say who won the war, so maybe Russia knows something we don't. That's all for this update video. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support the channel. Comments and questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, keep defending the truth. Keep defending democracy.